morning. Mm. I was wondering whether maybe that was partly relief. <laughs> yeah. kind of moving on. But our guest tonight can hopefully shed some light on last night's machinations. We're joined from Melbourne now by Shadow Industry Minister Sophie Mirabella. Ms Mirabella, thank you for joining us on The Drum. Good evening. Were you surprised to find out about the resignation of Ted Ballew? Well, obviously, just like everyone else, it was an unexpected thing and I just watched it unfold on TV. Well, and Chip Rolly was saying earlier he thinks it was clear that he was, was pushed despite the assurances of some coalition MPs today. What, what's your view on that? Oh, look, I think that's for Ted to explain, but you've been speaking all about Ted, how different he is, how he's perhaps old-fashioned and belongs to the politics of a, a gentler era, a more gentlemanly era, and I think he would have made the right assessment that it was in the interests of Victoria, of stable government that he go and that's probably why he went. Now beyond that it's all just making assumptions and second guessing of what went on. Right, I was going to ask you that as well today because Tim Colbatch wrote in The Age that this was evidence that good guys don't last long in politics and I think also Michael Kroger says he wasn't really cut out for the nasty side of politics. Do you agree with those commentators who have said this was his strength as a person but his failure as a politician? Oh look, I'm not going to, to judge Ted. He obviously cared very much about this state about the Liberal Party. He had the notion of service, which to some people sounds terribly old-fashioned, but it's a very valuable thing to have in those who are serving their community in Parliament. And perhaps he didn't have that aggressive approach, for example, like Kevin Rudd has, of stalking the media to get every single opportunity. Sure, he was a far more reserved individual, but I think his vision for Victoria, I think what he wanted to do for this state, uh, still stands. Well, and former coalition advisor Graham Morris said today that he thought that the Victorian Liberal Party were taking stupid pills because there was evidence in, you know, in, in recent experience that to oust a first term, a leader in their first term is, is, can be disastrous in, you know, in the upcoming elections. What do you make of that? Well, look, it's a decision that obviously was made within uh, discussions with the parliamentary Liberal Party. It wasn't some outsider wielding power. We didn't have a, a Paul Howes boasting on late night TV of how powerful he was and um, how he could uh, choose prime ministers. We're talking about an orderly uh, transition. It's part of the Westminster system and uh, that's what happened. And of course people are, are going to uh, make all sorts of comments but far be it from me to comment on commentators' interpretations of whether it was the right or, or okay, the wrong decision. Do you think it was a good thing that he resigned or do you think Ted Bellier should have stuck it out? Well, I think it was his decision and I trust Ted's judgment in this and if he perceived that it was the best thing for Victoria and the party, then um, I support him in his decision. Yeah, just quickly, how, how well do you know Dr Napfine? What can you tell us about him and what kind of leader he will be? We've obviously seen him in a leadership position before. Well, Dennis is a very experienced uh, minister. I've um, had a lot to do with him in his previous um, role when he was uh, the leader of the Liberal Party. Being uh, a rural and regional member myself, I can uh, give a full thumbs up to the Liberal Party for going outside the city to get a leader, to show greater empathy and understanding for all of Victoria. And I think that, exper that experience is the strong hands that people are wanting for and that stability to carry on the vision to build an even greater state. Right, and that, that could be the difficulty for him as well though, isn't it? Because he needs to maintain that stability and keep the promises that they made when they were elected and yet Peter Costello has also said he may, needs to make a clean break and redefine the, the Victorian Liberals, so this is his great chance to do so. Do you agree with that? Sure, there's always a need to engage the voting public, the community, with the message of the government of the day. And I think the Liberal values, our vision for Victoria stands and we need to find the most effective way of communicating that and engaging that message with the Victorian public. So you think perhaps um, Jeff Kennett was correct when he said that part of Ted Ballier's problem was, was about communication? Well, as 
I've said earlier, I think Ted was born for another, uh, a gentler era in politics where we didn't have this 24-hour media cycle and uh, we need to keep engaging mm. with, uh, with the media and, and with the community in a, in a more aggressive way than was even the case 10 years ago. Uh, Sophie Mirabella, Chip Raleigh here. Um, look, I just want to go back to, I, mean, I guess it's, it's very confusing for those of us in the media and those of us outside of, if you, if, if you will, north of the border, um, trying to sort of unpack what the, the sort of events that led up to this. One question, why did he lose the confidence of his colleagues? Um, uh, wh what was it? Surely it's not just communication skills. Um, behind that, mm. did it have to do with what was revealed earlier in the week and the, the revelations about the tapes? And did it have to do with the fact that Ted Bailey had finally sort of taken some action and had referred to the Anti-Corruption Commission the case of uh, Mantak and um, Tony Nutt? Well, I can't really speak for the Victorian Parliamentary <laughs> Party and what decisions they took and what assessments they make. But are, so are you I hearing any whispers? You're from Victoria yourself. Are you hearing any whispers from your Liberal Party friends? Yeah, I am from Victoria, obviously, and I'm <laughs> proud of, a proud Victorian, a great state that it is. And look, obviously, when polls aren't going that well, people are concerned about those polls, and every political party uh, has those uh, same reactions to good polls and bad polls. And that's really uh, as far as I'm uh, qualified to comment. Uh, beyond that, I think you'd have to ask those individual members of the Victorian Liberal Party. Sophie Mirabella, it's Miranda Devine here. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to know what you think the effect will be of uh, this values resignation on the um, September election, on the federal coalitions, um, you know, how they will fare in the election. I think voters do and have made distinctions between state and federal politics. Having said that, I know as a federal team, we work uh, and we'll continue to work quite well with the uh, Victorian Liberal government. And the issues really affecting voters at the federal level is the cost of living, the carbon tax, job security, uh, the future of manufacturing, uh, the loss of services. Those sorts of issues uh, are federal issues and they are very focused on those. And travelling right across the, the suburbs and the towns of Victoria, they are the, um, the, the issues at the top of the list. Cost of living, uh, cost of electricity and job security. Okay, and just before you go, I need to ask you about the 457s debate, which is which has mm -hmm. dominated talk of federal politics this week. I know this falls under your portfolio. Um, there's been a stack of business leaders who have come out against it, including today the head of Boeing. What do you have? You seen any evidence of rorting this, and do you think it is er, it's an area that needs to be reviewed? Well, the federal government and Miss Gillard as Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister has presided over the 457 visa program for five years. If she says there is some rorting, where is the inquiry, where is the evidence? I think we need evidence-based policy, not a distraction, which is what this appears to be. It is sending the wrong message out there. We're supposed to be in the Asian century, so to speak, and when you look at the number of 457 visa entrants who turn into permanent um, mi uh, migrants, we have over 30% coming from Asia. So what message is the Prime Minister sending about our economic development, about us as a nation? So I think it is a distraction. I think she has caused great concern, yet again adding to the issue of sovereign risk of doing business in Australia when the government has a policy and all of a sudden, without any warning, without any analysis, without an inquiry, says there's a problem and we're going to overhaul it. So I think it adds to the lack of certainty about what this government that is desperate just to survive will say and do to get itself over the line at the next election. Sophie Mirabella, thank you very much for joining us on The Drum. Pleasure.